We're just trying to change the world here, people. Oh, really? The Facebooking and the tweeting and the Instagramming, all that would not exist without our understanding of science. So it's amazing that you took that as an insult. You mean true for you is different from true for anybody else. Have yeah, something to absolutely, true for you. because I can't think either got to be true or not. I can't, no, no. Welcome to O'Reilly Radio 148, recorded Friday, March 24th, 2017, where we dismantle the current events for your entertainment through mostly rational conversations that make you go, oh really. I'm your host, Andy Cowan, with my usual oh, suspects. Really? I've got Amber Besetter, <laughs> I've got Stephen Griffith, I've got Daniel Atherton, and I've got Spicy Meat Paste, also known as David O'Connor. Welcome, yes. one and all. Oh yeah. It is good to finally be back. Yes, where have where have you been? You've been you've been a traveling and and doing I, I hobbying and things. I have been things. traveling. I have also been learning how to make clothing, so I can now look correct for what I do, and making a bed, and I'm learning the glory of actually doing hand woodworking, which was fun. That that so that's, we'll I'm, that's that unconvincing. Goes. I'm not convinced that you actually had fun doing the hand woodworking. I actually learned that instead of using a friggin' that spade bit to cut a hole through multiple pieces of wood, just yeah. give me a damn hand auger. It's faster and I enjoy it. We actually okay. bent two spade well, bits. Well, who doesn't enjoy a good hand auger? I mean, I'm one uh, that, wanting to that guess sounds that, like uh, that's a, that's a euphemism. It's going to cost you it? at least tree fifty for a hand auger. I, mm-hmm. I feel that I'll need to go out to Urban Dictionary for hand auger. I mean, at least. <laughs> and we're already <laughs> stealing part of Dan's soul. No, <laughs> no. No, no, it was just a face palm. Oh, that was just no a face palm. Okay, left. okay, <laughs> okay. No, no soul has left. The soul the has not left the building yet. Okay. Oh no, we're just warming up. Gotcha. Okay. Well, <clears throat> this is a gentle massage. Well, la- <laughs> lady and gentlemen, uh, we make mistakes. <laughs> As if I'm speaking to the one lady in the audience. I don't know if that's true or not. I hope not. <laughs> I hope we have more ladies out there. Um, but we do make mistakes like that one, I guess. So please, if you find one, pause whatever your, the podcast is and after the fact, you know, or just drop us a line right now in the show. Uh, send us a note, oh, really radio podcast at gmail.com or phone it in at 470-222-6759. Now, speaking of that, let me, uh, let me go through here and I have some feedback from one of our Patreon supporters, and thank oh. you to our Patreon supporters. We've got Donald Davis, Melissa G., Henry, Daniel Duncan, and Dan Smith. So thank you very much for contributing to the show in all the ways that you do, including calling us out on uh, shenanigans and things like that. So he contacted me directly, and uh, this was in reference to two episodes ago. Um, which seems like 10 hours of content, but hey, actually, I think it probably was about 10 hours of content, but hey, here we go. Okay, so, Andy, I'm just listening to the bad ideas segment of the last episode. I'm incredibly disappointed in you, (laughs) Daniel and Amber. Oh. Yes, because apparently our portrayal of the DNC chair vote as rigged was offensive to him. Mm. So the guy y'all were championing was one of five candidates. The rules were the rules required a clear majority, which the winner was only shy by one vote. The other three candidates then backed the winner, and Bernie's guy did not gain a single vote in the second round. This info was available in the NPR story, and then he bolds it live as it happened. <clears throat> Much mm-hmm. like Bernie, his guy was not going to win, period. We progressives need to remember the lesson that this past election taught us, that we have to work with moderate liberals or else we get Trumps. Well, I just want to point out that we absolutely did mention that he lost by one and why. So, I mean, I don't see where the confusion there comes from personally. Since Uh, that was... We we may have not covered things as as in-depth in the procedure that was mentioned. We so, did. We did not. No. Good, we, we good catch catch on you. We but as for it. being forced to work with moderates, um, they're the reason we have Trump. Yeah, exactly. They're the reason we have Trump. Okay, 
and every person who voted for a third party candidate or a write in, anybody who didn't take this deadly seriously, that's the reason we have Trump. Which, honestly, most of the people who, like me, who voted for Bernie and everything else, you know, we took this deadly seriously. We went, oh, look, this is, we can see the horror of the, oh, God, if this occurs, what road it's going to go down, praying that it still wouldn't occur, as in Trump getting elected. Um, And, yeah, we all have now seen how that is going down. So, but, yeah, it's, I've seen too much. It's an issue that the Democratic Party has had for a long while in the fact of, Democratic Party and a lot of Democratic voters are willing to do a lot more compromising when they should do a lot more hardcore stancing going, no, we'll compromise and work with you for certain things. But on this other list over here, no, we're not going to compromise on that because that's like core moral objectives. He and I went back and forth a couple <laughs> times on this. Um, and uh, he, he also said that... Um, where was it? Uh, you talked as though... Oh, no, wait, uh, that was not the case, and you should, should have been obvious had you all not started from this, the DNC is corrupt prior assumption. You talked as though you assume Bernie's guy had won the first ballot and the election was stolen. Honestly, I had to turn it off after the show segment, so I'll finish it later, but I was turned off by that unreasonable discussion. Hmm. Well, it sounds like he's mad that I disagreed with him, and I refused to apologize for that, and the DNC is absolutely corrupt. Like, does he not remember anything having to do with Debbie Wasserman Schultz or, or Don Brazil, Tim Kaine? <clears throat> when did he start listening to the show? Because I remember Ellison. during the election before, I'm going, wait a minute, man. He's, he's, been, li- he's been listening <laughs> if, for a good long if, time. If I'm, he wants to take a, a look back at the overall election, I would challenge him to find how many articles, how many live news streams, how many times... Bernie Sanders was mentioned or had a spotlight on him in regular news media. His campaign was almost entirely viral because there was an absolute media blackout. Yeah. Hillary Clinton and pulled in he, every favor that she had um, to utterly destroy his ability to gain name recognition. Uh, there's no other explanation for no, there, why. There, there's, a, there's a number of nuances and explanations. There's a little more nuance. Okay, but, 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 but Daniel, do those take into account? Be, but he was a, a valid competitor to Hillary, and we can. I, I challenge you to show me where the, the amount of time <laughs> the media focused was in any way fair. Well, uh, well media what? bias is one thing, and that we actually, thanks to the, the WikiLeaks stuff, um, we have found out ties between the Hillary camp. And how the DNC played their hand. Mm-hmm. Um, there aren't necessarily a f- a full on smoking gun. Oh, wait, 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 wait. There we, were several we smoking have... guns. That there there were ones where they had called in. They specifically asked for favors to they, be called they, they, in they, they, they to block favors. out anything Bernie but was doing. The, the the thing is, when you ask someone the favor, they can always say no. They can always say no. It, it takes, yeah, it, it but it why takes would two they? To tango. <laughs> They, they did not say no. Morally, ethically, they should have said no. Um, so yeah, but to that. keep their job, that that was not going to happen. <laughs> Remember, actually, anyone in the news media could could have easily gone. Um, no, actually, a competitive fight's better for ratings than burying this guy, um, it, which is true. Um, so, yeah, but they but they wanted but they a competitive fight. They wanted it to be a battle between. The red versus the blue, not two on the blue. Can can I point something out as well? Mm, yeah. Um, it, was I hearing correctly when you said that he was saying that Keith Ellison didn't get any votes the second time around? Because it motherfucker got two hundred votes the second time around. Didn't get any additional votes. <clears throat> I would the have whole to Keith Ellison at... thing aside. Right. Um. The echo chamber of the DNC and the Hillary faithful, you need to turn off your caps lock and you need to take a look at the world, right? Because there's some key pieces of information that you're missing if you think that the people who supported Bernie are the reason you lost this election. Well, hang on, hang on. To be fair, (laughs) 
because I know he's probably screaming at us right now. <laughs> he was a Bernie supporter as well. Okay. Fair. So, that okay, well, fine, yeah, what, that I, doesn't I, make him less what, wrong. Bernie supporters are <laughs> okay. not the reason we lost this election. Also, to break no, in, no. Uh, yes, he was right. Keith Ellison got 200 both rounds. Okay. Right. No, I'm, I'm not disputing that. I was asking for clarification purposes. But uh, I, was like, just, if, I was confirming it. Yeah. If if the issue is that we didn't cover everything to his satisfaction, we didn't even get into the fact that like one of the biggest things that may have hurt Ellison was the fact that a staffer sent out a mass text message or some shit saying that he had been supported by a former uh, candidate who was running for the same position when that wasn't true. And it happened on the eve of the vote. Like we well, didn't even get into that. So it's not like we were omitting things purposely to suit our own cause here. We were, we only get to touch on so many things in the time frame that we have. Well, I, I would say that, uh, it was mostly, and this is true and I'm not, I'm not going to shy away from it. Our bias was showing. Yeah. And so, yes, but let's, our bias let's is showing. Be honest. We, even, even if you want to least, say that there was no collusion, yeah. the fact that there was such an incredible uproar about what Debbie Washerman Schultz was doing as head of the DNC, and the answer to that uproar was when she was forced to resign her position, she was immediately taken up as the honorary campaign manager for Hillary Clinton's campaign, did absolutely nothing to assuage any kind of fears or beliefs that crooked things had happened and people were being rewarded for it. Yeah, uh, and, uh, yeah. essentially. But I, which the, the, the thing with the crooked stuff that we saw in a lot of the, the primaries mm -hmm. was done by agents – of um, their own accord, without necessarily yes. any any arm bending. That's true. That there was not a grand conspiracy, but there was true. conspiracy minded thinking, where they were yes. all going to do what little part they could to pull it one particular direction. They happened to be all pulling in the same direction, yeah, nearly at the same and, time, and which makes it really shady on the on the look of it. It's yeah, not true. It was a it's lot just of a bunch of individuals. Independent agents acting in concert, but without coordination. Right. We don't know that there wasn't because the best conspiracies are always done just person to person, mouth to mouth, no text messages, no we emails. Need to get you some more tinfoil. This is true, but you are the one wearing the tinfoil hat saying that. I'm I just... am the one wearing the tinfoil hat saying these things. <laughs> just saying that that is Aside an actual that, thing the, that's happening. The, the <laughs> overall point that I want to make is people believed that Hillary was crooked. And the actions that she took in the wake of all of this mounting circumstantial evidence that crooked things were happening only served to just hammer that. every nail into the coffin of that perception. She did not help herself. That is she did no. not help herself in one Certainly not. Um, no. And, and, and I we're mean, still feeling the effects of that. Yeah. So, so we will be for uh, at least three more years. <laughs> well, that, that depends. But <laughs> Even yeah, that, it, um, this, this has ramifications that will, will shape and shake the Democratic Party for at least a generation. Correct. Now, speaking of, and thank you for your feedback. Please keep it coming, because this definitely at least gives us something to talk about, at the very least. And it, it does change the direction of the show, and you are important yeah. to us. Your feedback is important to us. We will address it. If you send us a, a voicemail, we will play it, and then we'll respond to that. So, Podcast at gmail.com, or engage with any of us on social media. We'll bring it to you. To you, um, you know, at O'Reilly Radio, you're going to find us nearly everywhere. Uh, so, you know, keep it coming, keep it coming. And of course, if you happen to be a Patreon supporter, you are guaranteed a spot. <laughs> Otherwise, <laughs> we'll see what happens. But yeah, you've bought you've bought the price of admission. So, thank you very much for being there, and of yes. course, your continued support. Now, uh, so speaking of legacies and the things that we're going to be feeling for a long time. Uh, looks like we haven't lost Obamacare yet. Yet. Yay! Now, I have, I have completely lost track of what number attempt this was 
uh, just uh, to repeal to repeal 61, I think 60 or 61, 61. I we'd already gone past. I, I figured we were probably past that already. Yeah. In one okay. way or another. Well, it, it, while we allow the Google food champion, uh, to do his thing. Yeah. Yeah. Fi- uh, figure that out. It's not going to be easy. I'm pretty sure. But again, to, yep. Go ahead. Daniel. To, to jump, uh, ahead and actually to use, um, some of Ryan, Paul Ryan's uh, quotes from his press conference today. <laughs> that was a gem. Yeah. Uh, well, no, no, it, it it does have some valid points and insight. And actually, quoting the man who who has at least some semblance of self awareness. Um, he acknowledged that. The Republican Party has gone from being the opposition party to the party in power. And with that comes some growing pains. Because let's 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 face it, part of the reason they didn't have the votes comes down to two things. You had the Freedom Caucus who thought this bill was too generous. Yeah, I, I, the, I want I want to stick that I want to stick that point just a little harder. One of the main reasons that the ACA is staying and that they could not pass the AHCA, uh, the A8 American Health Care Act, Act, yeah, the American Health Care Act, all separate words there, um, was because it didn't take away more things. They wanted a strict repeal. They wanted it all gone this was being too generous and by the same token when you couldn't get those people to vote for it so they were already some vote shy and as they're trying to win those people over and massage it to make it worse than it already was at the last that we talked about it then you have people that actually have constituents that are going to be affected and it is a fact that the lower income Trump voter is going to be more adversely affected by what they were trying to do than anyone else. And, and Trump on Tucker Carlson show Mm -hmm. even acknowledged this. Yeah. So they're at least starting to maybe look in a mirror a little bit. And some of them had some conscience about it. It's not conscience. It's self-preservation. I want to hold onto my seat. I think for them, that's the same thing. Well, I mean, the good, the good thing no, is... No, conscience is that and self-preservation are entirely two different things. Y- they One's are, One's moral, and the other one is lizard brain. But for a yeah, Congress Yeah, it's a biological critter. impulse to, to want to self-preserve. But yeah. I, I think the good thing that we can take out of that, even if their, you know, their actions are not altruistic, is the fact that so many of them refused to vote because they were getting inundated with calls and letters and, for fuck's sakes, faxes. And pizzas. And, and, pizzas. and pizzas. And everything they else. <laughs> yes, pizzas work. Like, That's what I, we've learned. I can't remember who it was, but uh, one of them had posted at the actual numbers about, like, she'd gotten 13 calls in support of the AHCA and then, like, 4,000 and something against it. Remember, people, call your congressmen. They do listen when there's enough of you. Yeah, because it makes them worry. If volume but, I mean, counts. Yeah, so I mean, like, granted, we would like them to be <laughs> more concerned about the ethics of the thing, but, you know, whatever victory, whatever method of victory we need to preserve Obamacare or at least make sure a plan like the AHCA does not pass, I'm willing to take it. Again, yeah. Republicans are motivated by fear. Voters and representatives. So put the fear of losing their jobs in them. There's the funny thing about this whole vote, though. If you actually look at who voted on it, I have to go back and see the article. Well, I know Bannon was looking at who voted one way or another. But a number of the people who, like, because in all the other repeals that have actually gone to a vote, Mm -hmm. you know, majority of almost all the Republicans have always voted yes, repeal, yes, repeal, yes, repeal. A number of the more moderate ones this time, and I, I think it was on Rachel Maddow's show, or uh, Chris Hayes' show, one of the two, where they basically came up with the idea of the, yeah, you saw it before because there was no real stakes in the game. There was no skin on the teeth in the idea of, okay, if we pat, if we throw this out there, it's going to be shot down. The president and nothing else will veto the, the friggin' thing. 
you know, we cannot kill this, but we can still make that moral, grand moral stand saying we're trying to do this for you. Token vote. Now in the time when they actually have a chance to do it, a number of their members who've always voted to repeal it have gone, uh, no. Again, and I it's, find that one interesting. Thing to be, it's one thing to be the opposition party. It's another thing to be the party in power. That, that is something that's going to play often this year. Mm-hmm. If something fails, it is going to be put into light on the Republican side. It's growing pains. But the funny thing is, even beyond that, it's, it's along those same lines. I was actually listening to several Republican strategists nowadays talking about this. And they're going on, yeah, the, 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 vote, the vote failed, but it's still a win for us. And we're going, what? Yeah, I, I can tell you how it's a win. Amazing they spin doctor. explain it, but they were still saying that. They're, that whole... It's very, as I'm going to call it now, a Trumpism. The, we're losing, but because we're losing, we're winning. I, mm-hmm. I can explain it. All right, All right Mr. Tinfoil Hat. Hey, what do hey, you got? Hey. So, uh, how it, deep does the rabbit hole go? <laughs> how deep does the rabbit hole go? It goes back to yesterday. Uh, <laughs> Senate votes to let ISPs sell your web browsing history to advertisers. Mm-hmm. That was their win. Without, they, they, they covered it under this. And buried yeah, this, that this little bit of news. Much play that that is that is a valid point. Um, the R win and the R way you can spin it as a win is this is a win for the Freedom Caucus. They held the rest of the Republican Party hostage. Yeah, they, they took the they took their ball and went the home. Name of the Tea Party. Yeah. The yeah the Tea Party Republicans, also known as the Freedom Caucus, held the rest of the party hostage. Like they've been doing for the last eight years. Pol- yes. Politics for, you know, with with the Republicans in charge of the House and Costa in charge of the Senate, even under Obama, their their M.O. has been find some big piece of news. And while that news is going on, try to sneak in SOPA, uh, try to try to sneak in um the 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 pip destroying net neutrality. Yeah, try well, to sneak in all the, kinds of things while there's something big going on. Like this is just the TTIP. This is just how they operate on a day to day basis. This is how government operates. Yeah. Now, yeah, current. lately, yeah, it's, it's it's ugly, but yeah, that's it's it's both sides. Both sides are freaking dirty. That's why we need to replace all of them. Well. Yeah, but beyond a nuclear the, the strike, it's not going to happen. Go all the issues are systemic, because like the, the 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 entire overall system of our government is designed to corrupt people. Well, well it's dark that's money. The, yeah, that's the power corrupts mindset. Uh there there are other features built into how we move people up the chain of command that yeah. lend themselves incredibly well to making it so you have to get your hands dirty if mm-hmm. you want to make it to the next level. A lot of pork barrel politics and with how lobbying works now, it, it's, it's, it's crazy nasty. Um, and once you actually get a seat at the table, especially if you're a senator, you can easily spin that should you lose your seat or should you just retire um, into a very cushy private sector job, also lobbying? Because you, yeah. you've you had lunches. You know these people. You know how to talk to them. You already have access. So you can then take what you, you have begged, steal, borrowed, murdered, etc. to get into D.C., and then turn that to staying in D.C., but without having the, the magnifying glass of the public eye. And make a whole lot of money. Oh, oh yes. Oh, I've, yeah. I've got to send you a tinfoil hat. <laughs> I, I want a tinfoil pork pie. Pork pie? Um, mm-hmm. Tinfoil pork pie. I'll okay. send you a tinfoil done, just whatever you want. But, <laughs> no, the... the, the, the mm-hmm. There is a... Because of how it's let, it, what we're learning with the Trump administration and their current run of Republicans, 
letter versus spirit of law. If it's not a crime, we're going to do it. It may even break a law, but if the law does not come with a punishment, then what does it matter? Yeah, that's the problem I've been seeing a lot of times is there's our, there are laws out there. There are ways to – and things set to punish them, but no one is willing to pull the trigger on the, all right, no, you've done wrong. We're now going to actually arrest you and or just press charges. Well, yeah, but that, that's just one person. You know, it's – all of them have this the, – um, the foundation of the house is corrupt. Yeah. Yeah. Everything that is holding up the edifice is rotted. Rotted worms. Yeah, it's just and Which you the know, funny thing is, having listened to money. a lot I mean, this is some actual Republican or Republicans, representatives and senators. They let me say, especially the representatives. Once they get elected, okay, they got a two year term. Okay, of which they are only going to actually truly serve about Six one six months. No, about one full year because the other full year essentially is spent entirely fundraising. Yeah. And they have to do this if they want to get reelected. A lot of them were like, hey, no, we want like the public fund system where, you know, if you want to run, you just have a, you know, here is the bank, the blank, the check you get from the government for X amount of money. That's what you okay. got. And everybody gets the same. Go. They don't have to spend time on the phones. They don't have to try to fundraise. They don't have to do all this other crap. It's simply they do your job to. to- to take but that those meetings in, with the the two thousand dollar a plate dinner, yeah. But there's no, there is no lobbying organization that isn't going to immediately flood them with more money than that system would ever give them. Yeah, but there are. Well, no, it's changing. Well, it's it's changing shut that system, system down. Well, well, it's changing the rules of the system so that public funding is the only option. Yeah, one of the things like we are kind of unique. Uh, looking across to our our. Special, our, our allies with a special relationship, the UK, um, their stuff's government funded. Also, their their window for you to campaign, it's two weeks, man. You got two weeks to campaign. You get public funds. Go. Yeah, when we have a president that has decided that he's also going to run for re-election now. 20, Which there's a 23 funny days thing about into that. his uh, into his presidency. Well, that's because he loved being on the campaign trail. Yeah, that's all he wants. I to like do. It's more than that. Yeah. Uh, what do you here's got? Here's what you, there's somebody in the background who is incredibly devious and very very smart, and Man. it's bad for everybody else wow, because is going around quick. Well, no, this is actually I free, I think it was actually NPR. Later. NPR, where I actually got this from is there are certain things you're allowed to say and do to somebody who is a sitting president. There are certain things you are not allowed to say or do to someone who is a sitting president. Right. Now, there are also certain things you're allowed to say and do to somebody who is a candidate. There are certain things you're allowed to say, not allowed to say and do to someone who is a candidate. And sometimes the things you're allowed to do with a president, you are not allowed to do with a candidate and vice versa. Yeah, it limits what oh. range of So it limits what you can actually say yeah. about them, what you can actually do in retaliation, any of that kind of stuff. It cuts off a lot of that because it's both. Yeah, it also muddies the waters a lot and would then create oh, yeah. a... Which makes enforcement a nightmare. ...avenue for legislation on it, uh, or at least uh, any legal action. And it makes a yeah. ton of headlines that cover up some shady stuff that people are doing. And we're back to the tinfoil. That, as we have already seen... He's fundraising. He's fundraising he's fun- since he since he got in office, guys. That never stopped. Yeah. It's just he yeah. officially announced his campaign, and now with every single email the Trump White House sends out it is also tied to their fundraising effort. So so are all of his trips to Mar a Lago. Uh, a lot of them are for fundraising. A number of them are just because he doesn't like sitting in D.C. He no, li- they're all West because Park. he likes getting money, and he is charging the United States government every time he goes and stays at his own resort. Yeah, yeah no, that that that's that's the other thing that is is a wonderful headline that kind of got buried. The Secret Service in the interim. Is- the Secret, the Service, Secret is Service renting Service a floor. For Sixty million additional dollars of funding, yeah, and being denied, which I'm going, good, dude. That that no no, 
No, that, that, that is both good and bad. Mm-hmm. Good on you for, for not doing insane spending. But also I'm going, it keeps up with the volume of the trips. Secret Service is going to run out of money. Oh, yeah. What then, happens to his protection details? That's a great question. I can't wait to find out. Um, <laughs> so our friends over at uh, the uh, Trump Damage Report and EpicProgress.com, um, they're, they're continuing to uh, tally how much it's costing us to have uh, um, President well, Trump continue to know, gallivant we know, about. We know we've already spent enough to buy all of Canada a cheeseburger. Yeah, that was last time. Um, it has updated as of March 24th, uh, at least at the time of this posting, which was a little bit in this afternoon. Um, care to take a guess? <laughs> Well, we were at eight, mm. about roughly eighty million last time. Eighty million, yeah, something yeah. like that. Yeah. So let, 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 let's let's throw the a hundred and ten. Oh, too high, too high. Okay, ninety six. Too high. Thankfully, oh. <laughs> eighty five. Pretty close, Amber. Seventy eight. Not eighty seven. Close to the pen without going over. 87.171 yep. million dollars of travel expenses. Basically, just upkeep of, of the Trump family lifestyle, because this also includes, you know, Ivanka Their and ski, all ski trips, all of his, yeah. his but the large vast, family. The vast majority of his supporters just don't care. They don't the line to. I keep hearing over and over again, and any reference to this growing figure, is uh, Will Obama ah. spent more? No, he didn't. No. Oh, oh no, no, we know that, yeah. and you can show them that that's not the case. But, but they, they don't, don't care, care. because yeah. their response to any information is, "Well, do you believe everything you read?" That's the liberal media. They're just hiding costs. Which, incidentally, uh, it's funny that they accuse the Democrats of hiding costs because mm-hmm. there's a story in our show notes that deals with the RNC hiding costs. Well, oh, man. you a, also had a uh, a representative, a Republican representative, being brought up for ethics charges for violating campaign finance. Mm-hmm. All this and more as we continue our, uh, <laughs> our. I have great news, though. Journey into as at, at a uh, um, at the. Median income of forty nine thousand dollars a year per American. It'll yep. only take each of us seventeen hundred and seventy nine years to <laughs> to actually gross eighty seven million dollars. Excellent. All right. Uh, how how long how long does it, is it going to take me? Seventeen seventy nine. We just passed over the seventeen seventy six. Oh wow! I need, uh, Which would have been then. full America. So that we're going to need transhumanism. We will need transhumanism. More on that as we Later. continue. Um, but just as a little sideline, you know, as I as I wrap up the how much does Trump cost us? Uh, Trump has spent now seven times more in two months <laughs> on travel and personal expenses than the entire amount Obama and Biden did over the full eight years. Seriously? Well, seven times more. Than the president and vice president did in eight years. That's eighty-seven point one million to twelve point one million. I'm gonna go ahead and amend that number wow. to infinite. He's cost us infinity <laughs> uh, <laughs> because after he bankrupts yeah. this country and and dissolves the government, there you can't put a, a price tag on the amount of pride we lose. Yeah, uh, most of us have already lost our price. Our pride. Um, <laughs> oh, you yeah. still got a little bit left. I can see it. <laughs> no, no. I say we really. should try to turn Iceland into a world power. Let's go with this. It won't be long, <laughs> they do probably. Right. Yeah, they're, they're an island. It, you know, it's happened before. Why not? Um, Mama Van in the chat room said that I would have loved to see Trump's temper tantrum when this didn't go his way. Now, here's the thing about that. It didn't exactly give him a temper tantrum because before it went this way, he said that he was going to blame the Democrats. Yeah. What did and he do he did. immediately after it went this way? 
he blamed, he blamed the, Democrats. the Democrats, which didn't have the means of opposing. No. Now here's the. This was a, a a this was a budget measure. It wasn't an actual bill. It was a right. budget measure that only needed a simple majority to pass both chambers. Right, and they couldn't get it. They couldn't get a simple majority. Because it wasn't bad enough. That's amazing. Like, Gorsuch appointments mm-hmm. uh, in the Senate, that actually has to pass by 60 votes. That's and, why you're hearing in the news today yeah. about the Democrats possibly filibustering this. Well, the 60 votes is what surpasses the filibuster. That's why they need 60, 60 votes. Yeah. Okay. So, yeah, that's it. It would just be a simple majority, but it has to be that overwhelming majority to beat the filibuster. And since filibustering was done all the time, it became the de facto thing that we had to look at as, okay, it's just got to be 60 votes. You've got to have 60 until votes they, in order to do they, it. Until they make their rule change to just need a simple majority. Yeah. And to get rid of the filibuster, which yeah. will that's the thing. Be, again, th- this that's the nuclear option it, that they always talk it, about. Yeah, getting you know th- outlawing this that. group of Republicans doesn't care for traditions unless they're the ones that agree with them. There are so at least I see a few them of actually them. getting rid of the filibuster. There are at least I, a few I, of I them though that are my seat. <laughs> <laughs> there are a few of them though that realize that if we do this now. It's going to hurt us in the future when we need it. There are yeah. a few of them, so there are some tempering voices there. Yeah, and well, like Warren those, Hatch those, and yeah. uh, McCain, and and this alone, you know, if if there's any reason at all to not have term limits, it is to have people that have an institutional memory like this realize that that would be a bad thing for the future. Well, the Senate was supposed to be the the, the just as an example the House uh, that was very slow moving. This was what the framers intended, right? It, yeah, very right. slow slow moving. That was where cooler heads would prevail. Yeah, that was the hope. That, 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 <laughs> the House is you are a slave to your base, and mm-hmm. this is the the chamber where the representation reflects the populace. That's what it was intended to be. Yeah, mm-hmm. that was the fast moving chamber. <sighs> So yeah, you know, the you know how they broke that over their one. knee. Yeah. Now, speaking of the base, and then we'll move on to uh, to the uh, next uh, the next big topic here, and and wrap this part of the show and go on to B. Um, Alex Jones. Yeah, yeah, yeah I, Sorry, I, that yeah, trip a little. Yeah, I know, I know. Uh, Alex Jones of you know, fame and fortune and lizard people are real. Chemtrails are totally turning. Frogs gay and things like that. Yes, these are things that he said. Um, he was also the one that really propagated the whole Pizzagate thing. And apparently today, he actually apologized for it. Why did he apologize for it? Because <laughs> someone tried to kill the people at the pizza parlor over the stories coming in with guns and things trying to find Yeah, that was months ago, it. though. Yeah, but, yeah. Now, but that's how long it takes for him to, like really realize but that now you can do wrong. it and it becomes back page news and no one pays attention to right. it right yeah so. especially when it's on a friday which is everyone in, in, when everything gets dumped. refers to it as trash day right which is one of the reasons why we do the show on trash day yeah. because now did and then i we'll... miss when david turned into a turtle <laughs> no, he no, shut, no, he shut off his at, video. Pretty much at the point where we started this transition. Yeah. So when yeah. we mentioned Alex Jones, he turned, he turned into, into a reptile. A turtle. Oh, well, an amphibian. Um, <laughs> reptile? No, I think that's reptile. a tortoise. Turtles that's a reptiles. tortoise. So that's a reptile. Okay. <laughs> but no, he usually he does this when his fiance is in the room because his fiance doesn't want to be on camera. So ah. he'll be back. <laughs> so a little, uh, little, little behind turtle. the scenes. Behind He'll the scenes, transmogrify actually. into exactly. the David-shaped creature we've all come to know. Precisely. The David-shaped creature that mm-hmm. we've all come to know. Yes, that. What you said, those were words. And those were the best words. <laughs> so, <laughs> and on that note, okay, okay. So uh, I, I had the script. I had it. It was right here. Ah, <laughs> oh, there we go. Okay. 
So, if you've enjoyed what we've done here and you'd like to help us out, there's a few ways. You can donate to the show through patreon.com slash radio and get early access to show content when the world allows me to do things like that. Also, make the algorithm work for us by reviewing us on iTunes to boost our ranking. Use your words to tell somebody else about us. And, of course, engage with us directly. Send us an email or a message on the social medias at Podcast at gmail.com or at Radio everywhere else. And if you're the more talkative sort, how about 470-222-O-R-L-Y, that's 6759, and that's always ready to take your call or your text. And if you don't like what we've done here this evening, you can contact the National Suicide Prevention Hotline at 1-800-273-8255, available 24 hours a day, seven days a week. The Lifeline provides free and confidential support for people in distress, prevention and crisis resources for you or your loved ones, and best practices for professionals. Thank you for choosing to waste your valuable time with us. This has been O'Reilly Radio, part of the Random Acts Company. This work license under a Creative Commons Attribution 3.0 United States license, including the Music Rocket and PMGA, created by Kevin McLeod of IncomTech.com. We'll see you real soon. Mm-hmm.